Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the English with Gemma podcast. So today I want to keep things nice and short and sweet. Um, so I'm just going to dive right into today's topic. So today we are going to be talking about the English learning technique shadowing. So shadowing is particularly useful when you're trying to improve your accent or pronunciation, but I think that it can improve your English in general. So we're just going to start off with what exactly shadowing is in more detail and kind of how do we understand what it is. Um, I am going to be looking down quite a lot today because I have my notes on my computer in front of me. If you're listening, that's fine. But if you're watching the video on YouTube and you're wondering why I'm looking down so much, that's because I don't want to forget what I want to say. So I'm going to be reading from my notes. All right. So first, like what exactly is shadowing? I know I just briefly touched on it, but it is a little bit more detailed than what I just said. So obviously the word shadow means like being behind someone or watching someone, following someone, just like your shadow would follow you on a sunny day. So imagine becoming a shadow of someone else who has already mastered the English language. So that's essentially what shadowing is. Um, we can also use the verb to shadow someone when you go to a workplace, like an office, or really any type of job. It doesn't have to be a corporate job. And you follow someone around for the day or maybe even for a few weeks, and you shadow them. You follow them to see what their job role is like. And you kind of just watch them work in order to get a better understanding of their job role and to see if it might be a good fit for you or to learn your new career. So shadowing in both contexts has that similar idea of mimicking someone, copying someone. So shadowing technique in English um, would mean basically listen closely to a piece of spoken English, whether that's, you know, a podcast or a movie or uh, a YouTube video, any little snippet of spoken English, a short clip of spoken English. You listen to it really closely, really carefully. You might pause it and play it back a few times. And then you try to repeat it out loud. And you try to mimic the speaker as closely as possible. So where did shadowing come from? The shadowing technique is definitely not a new thing, um, but it, it gained popularity in the 2000s um, thanks to a linguist and polyglot, someone who speaks many, many languages, Alexander Arguelles. So he believed that shadowing could immerse learners in the melody of the target language because, you know, a lot of having good pronunciation and intonation is listening to the melody and the rhythm, the tempo of a language. So he thought that the shadowing technique could help them focus on the correct sounds, isolating those sounds, and then in hopes of basically in the long run, um, improving their overall pronunciation. So let's delve a little deeper into the orig origins and principles behind shadowing. <clears throat> so, like I mentioned, Alexander Arguelles designed this technique to really immerse learners in the rhythm and intonation of their target language. So by shadowing native speakers, learners can kind of internalize the correct pronunciation patterns and then also over time hopefully improve their fluency because a lot of pronunciation is just getting the right um, positioning in your mouth and kind of training your tongue and your anatomy to move in a specific way because the way that our mouth moves 
from language to language changes. So we have to practice that, of course. That's why it, sometimes it feels so difficult to pronounce certain words in English because those sounds might not you know, exist in your native language. And it's really hard to get your tongue, your teeth, your lips, your mouth to do something that it's never done before. So of course you need to practice and you need to hone that skill. So shadowing is not just about repeating words. It's about capturing the true essence of a spoken language. So what I mean by that is like really closely focusing and following the speaker's cadence and inflection. So that's all about tone and how how the language actually sounds. And then learners can then develop their English into a more natural sounding way. So it's not all just about the accent because it's totally fine to have a non-native English accent. This is more about focusing on correct pronunciation and also like correct intonation so you don't sound monotone when you speak. So why does shadowing actually work? There are lots, if you're really interested in science and psychology and those kinds of things, there are loads of papers and resources that you can find online about why shadowing is effective. They've done loads of studies um, and the findings do show that it is an effective uh, way to improve your English. However, it's not like the best or the most effective. There are definitely loads of other things you can do, but it is effective if practiced regularly. So let's break down why it's effective. Firstly, shadowing provides articulation training. So articulating is what I'm doing right now. It's very clearly pronouncing the words. And it helps you train your facial muscles, like I spoke about earlier, your anatomy, your lips, and your tongue. Um, it helps them get trained to produce sounds that might not exist in your native language. So picture it kind of as a workout, an exercise for your mouth. Just as you would exercise the muscles in your body at the gym, shadowing helps you exercise your articulators to produce English sounds accurately. So secondly, um, shadowing is also going to help you pick up on the rhythm of English. So knowing when to stress certain words and when not to. So if you don't know what word stress is, you can look at the sentence that I just said in order to demonstrate what that is. So when I said, knowing when to stress certain words and when not to, which word do you think I stressed in that sentence? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. <laughs> I stressed the word words, yeah? I said, when to stress certain words and when not to. So that is what word stress is. It's putting emphasis on a specific word when you speak. So the reason why English can be kind of tricky is because it's it's a stress-timed language, meaning that certain syllables are emphasized more than others. So shadowing is going to really allow learners to internalize that rhythm and hopefully lead to a clearer and more natural kind of speech. Thirdly, it's going to teach you about linking, okay? How to link words together naturally, which is a crucial aspect of fluent English speech. So you might have heard of linking. You might have also heard of connected speech. They're the same thing. So English is notorious, well-known for connected speech, where words flow seamlessly into one another. So by shadowing, learners can practice linking words and phrases, and that's really going to help with the fluidity of everything, okay? Um, another thing that shadowing is really going to help with is accent reduction and acquisition of the language. So like I say to all my students, having an accent is not the end of the world. It's really okay. I think having an accent is something that is cool because it shows that you're bilingual and that you're fluent in another language and it's nothing to be ashamed of. However, lots of learners 
would like to reduce their accents a little bit. Um, that's a very common goal that I have with a lot of my students. So shadowing can really help you reduce your native ang um, accent because you're going to be listening to native English speakers and you're going to mimic, copy exactly the sounds that you're hearing. So that in turn means that you're going to end up picking up whatever accent you're listening to. You know, whether that's American, Australian, British, Jamaican, whatever native English accent you're interested in, hopefully if you listen to it enough and you mimic it enough by using shadowing, you will pick up that accent naturally. So I think that with regular practice of shadowing, learners can really refine their pronunciation and intonation to mirror whatever accent they're trying to accomplish. Um I think it's a good idea to listen to both British and American. I am aware that those are not the only two native English accents, but those are the most common ones that people like to listen to or aspire to. And then just like choose which one you feel more comfortable with. There's no better or worse when it comes to the accents. Um, it's just about whatever one is easier for you and, and you're more comfortable with. And again, having a specific accent is really not the goal, the ultimate goal when you're speaking English. It's clear pronunciation and effective communication. So accent really, as long as your accent isn't too thick and too overbearing and strong, it shouldn't really affect your ability to be understood by native speakers. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to optimize your shadowing practice. How do you actually do shadowing? Because now we understand how it works, but how can we really make the most out of our practice shadowing sessions? So there are two main approaches when it comes to shadowing. There's echoing. So an echo is like when you say like, hello, hello. The echo is when you hear that reverberation of the sound. So there's echoing without pausing and echoing with pauses after each line. So it's really um, essential to set clear intentions for your shadowing practice and to focus on specific elements of the speaker's speech. So for example, you might focus on mimicking the speaker's intonation, rhythm, and pronunciation of specific sounds. So you might like just focus on, for example, the TH sound, like the th sound, or you might just focus on the z sound, z, okay? So try to focus on a specific sound. That's going to make it a lot easier for you to have a clear focus, because if we just go into shadowing with no clear goal, it's not really going to be as efficient as when you have a clear thing to focus on. And don't forget to utilize all the amazing free resources you have online for shadowing, like TED Talks, English speeches, podcasts, like all that good stuff, YouTube clips. You have entire movie clips on, on YouTube, so you can really find whatever material, material you want for shadowing. Um, I would recommend using subtitles when you shadow. It just helps because you're seeing as well as listening. You're reading as well as listening, but it's up to you. At the beginning, I definitely recommend using subtitles. So choose content for shadowing that you find interesting and relatable and engaging because that's going to make the practice much more fun for you and you're going to stay a lot more motivated and immersed in your shadowing practice. If you're listening to boring TED Talks that you're not actually interested in, then of course it's not going to be a fun exercise. But if you choose a topic that you're really fascinated by, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot more fun. So how do we implement shadowing into our real lives? So once we have done the shadowing practice, how do we take that and then apply it to real life situations? The first thing that I'll say is that consistency is key. I always say this to my students, whatever you're practicing, whether it's grammar or listening or writing or reading or shadowing, whatever, you have to be consistent. So it doesn't have to be loads of time per day, but I would say 10 to 15 minutes daily of a shadowing practice 
is really going to help you start building those new speech patterns and honing those skills. So you can do shadowing while you're commuting to work or exercising or doing chores around the house. Just try to find opportunities to incorporate it into your daily life so that it's easier um, and more accessible for you. So you can listen and repeat while you're washing the dishes. It doesn't have to be something like where you're super focused and sat down. You can multitask if that works for you. I'm horrible at multitasking, so it probably wouldn't work great for me. I would need to sit down and focus for 10 to 15 minutes. So another tip is to record yourself when you shadow. Record yourself and then listen back because that's going to provide you really valuable feedback for improvement. You will actually be able to hear yourself and and then judge like, do I sound similar to this person that I'm trying to shadow or do I sound totally different? Because sometimes when we're just, you know, speaking, but we don't record it, we think we sound great. And then when we listen back to the recording, we're like, oh, sometimes that happens with my podcast. I'm like, that was a great episode. And then I listen back and I'm like, what the hell was I talking about? So it's good to record yourself. All right. So in our next section, I want to talk a little bit about like, what are the actual benefits of a sh- shadowing technique? Um, how is it going to improve not just your pronunciation, but all your other English skills? So, of course, it's improving pronunciation, fluency, and overall English. And it's kind of bridging that gap between learning and then real-life English and real-life communication. Um, I think that it's really useful for everything, though, because it's, it's listening. It's also reading practice if you're using subtitles. And then it's what we call active learning because you're then producing something you're copying passive learning is when we just scroll on instagram and look at content or we just read something and then we don't actually produce any language that's passive learning but shadowing is a really great way to move from active sorry from passive to active learning um and the last thing i kind of want to talk about is exploring alternatives to shadowing. So obviously shadowing is a really powerful exercise, but it's definitely not the only language learning technique as we know. So it's definitely key to explore different methods and just see what works best for you. Whether you prefer traditional methods like vocabulary drills, writing lists, reviewing vocab, maybe grammar exercises, or modern techniques like going to language exchanges or using an app like Elsa or Pingo Learn. Um, there's no like one size fits all when it comes to language learning. So definitely experiment and see what helps you the most because maybe you try shadowing and you, you think this is not actually helpful for me. So in this episode, I just wanted to kind of touch on what shadowing is how to do it, how it can be useful, um, but also encourage and motivate you to try different techniques other than shadowing. So there you have it. That is the conclusion of today's episode. Um, I hope that that gave you a nice overview of shadowing and how to implement it in your English learning journey. Um, Remember that whether you're a beginner or advanced level, shadowing can be a really valuable technique. Don't forget to experiment, see what works best for you. And yeah, that's it, you guys. Today, I just wanted to do a short, sweet episode. Um, I hope that you all have a lovely weekend because this will be coming out on Friday on Spotify and Sunday on YouTube, as always. And yep, let me know what you want to hear next episode. I always love reading your suggestions. This was actually suggested in the comments um, to talk about shadowing today. So please, any more suggestions, I'm totally open to hearing them. So thank you so much for watching and listening. And until next week, happy learning. Bye. Thank you.